the upper swan is great for land based fishing. But what about kayaking? G'day everybody, Paz here, back with part 2 of our Upper Swan Odyssey. Last time, I took the kids fishing off the banks of the Upper Swan River as part of my delve into this part of the river. Now, as promised, I've set out on my trusty Red Devil, the Tarpon 100 kayak, to see if the Upper Swan yaks fishing is as productive. However, I do need to say one thing. I'd intended to make a day of this session, but once again, Father Time decided to kick me in the backside and make my schedule close up. As such, I only have an hour or so to get out. Therefore, I've decided to limit myself to one location and save the more in-depth stuff for part three. That isn't to say that this session is gonna be unproductive. I'm trying some new equipment, trying not to freeze my butt off, and hopefully come away with some learnings. I've headed to Garrett Road Bridge, the gateway to the Upper Swan, and part two of my latest Swan River snapshot. Check it out. My session began on a bloody cold morning, as I got the Red Devil in working order. I fished Garrett Road Bridge before, and although it's dubious that it could be considered the upper swan, I view it as a transition point of sorts. No blowies, the flathead mostly slow down, and the brim are there in relative abundance. I warmed up, slightly, as I paddled towards the bridge. My setup remained the same, six pound line and leaders, one on a light rod with a soft plastic, and the other a bait line with prawns and a small split shot sinker. However, I decided to try something a bit different. Rather than my usual jig head, I've opted for a Strike Tiger Bronze. While the brand is known for catering to mostly freshwater species like trout, I like the look of the jig head's small profile and more angular hook a stark contrast to my usual rounded versions. When rigged up, the hook tip lay flatter to the Z-Man grub. I know, I know, weedless hooks achieve the same result. However, my snapshots are all about answering the questions I have about the swan, and this has been swirling around in the old noggin for a while. Never hurts to give it a shot. As the sun rose, I busied myself casting into the bridge pylons. I worked my way down, pausing to cast a few times into the space between the bridges to try and catch any fish out in the open. As I twitched my latest cast, I felt a hit. Brim often mouthed the bait before committing to it, so I was about to pause when my line took off. It surprised me. The brim had hooked itself on the initial touch. Maybe it was the jig head? I can't say for sure, but as I dragged the fish away from the structure, I was happy with the result nonetheless. The brim was respectable and was caught 20 minutes into my hour.
Like every brim I catch, it was released safely. I was content, a picture perfect kayak brim from start to finish. Unfortunately, none of his mates got the memo because it went dead quiet after that. A couple of touches on the plastic, but none after that. Even my bait rod got nothing. Maybe my release fish had spooked the others. More likely, they'd moved out with the high tide and were actively hunting the flats nearby. Still, I had no time to pursue them as my hour drew to a close. I headed back to the launch point somewhat satisfied. While I wasn't really happy with only a single brim, one fish is better than no fish. I also ticked off my kayak goal for my upper swan snapshot. Well, mostly. I still want to spend a decent session on the devil actually fishing the banks and snags of the upper river. Of course, you'll have to stay tuned for part three. Again, sorry for the shorter session. Life has a habit of getting busy. I'll hopefully get half a day in the near future to give the upper swan a session it deserves. I'm also gearing up for a massive challenge. Stay tuned for more. As always, this video is dedicated to my two sons. We're so close to our 1000 sub goal, I can taste it. This is Paz wishing you fair winds and tight lines. Until next time.